This is Ding. He's 33 years old and currently lives in Melbourne, but he originates from what is now known as South Sudan. South Sudan is a landlocked, sub-Saharan African country bordered by the Republic of Sudan, Ethiopia, Kenya, Uganda, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and the Central African Republic. When Deng was born, his country was part of Sudan. In 2011, South Sudan gained independence from Sudan after years of civil war which displaced millions. Deng spent much of his childhood as a refugee in Kenya and Ethiopia before eventually settling with his family in Australia. This presentation will provide some background information on food culture in both Sudan and South Sudan, which are sometimes referred to together as the former Sudan, and it will also examine their influence on cuisine in Australia. Sudanese food has been widely influenced by historical visitors to the region. In the first half of the 20th century, the joint British-Egyptian rule of Sudan brought sugar, cassava and herbs and spices like cardamom, chilies, ginger and cumin. Before that, Turkish rule in the 19th century introduced garlic, peppers, meatballs and pastries to Sudanese food. According to the FAO, the staple foods of the former Sudan are millet, wheat, teff, yams and sorghum, which is very commonly made into a thin bread called kisra. Meat features heavily in Sudanese food, with lamb, mutton and beef commonly eaten everywhere, and camel, chicken and fish eaten regionally. Peanuts are a favourite ingredient and snack, and coffee is exceptionally popular in Sudan, often served spiced with cardamom and cloves. Sudanese food is influenced by its closest neighbours and geographical features. Camel meat and milk feature in northern Sudan, while Ethiopia to the east is responsible for the Sudanese love of coffee. Seafood features heavily in the south, thanks to an abundance of lakes, rivers and lagoons, and cattle grazing in the west lends milk and dairy to the diet. Stewing is a popular method of cooking in Sudan, including meats and vegetarian dishes like fool or fava beans. Cooking tends to be over fire or charcoal or on a stove in modern homes rather than in an oven. Meat, fish and fruits such as dates are often preserved by smoking or drying and then eaten on their own or incorporated into other meals. The Sudanese civil war split Sudan along religious lines. South Sudan is 61% Christian and mostly Catholic, and so there is some adherence to Catholic directives such as fasting on Good Friday, Ash Wednesday and during Lent. The Republic of Sudan is almost entirely Muslim, and so they generally adhere to Islamic food laws, only eating halal meat and excluding pork. Alcohol is prohibited under Sharia law, but a black market gin distilled from dates called Iraqi remains popular. An unusual aspect of culinary culture in Sudan involves the making of kisra bread. When being made traditionally, the kisra pan is oiled with the fat rendered from a sautéed cow's brain instead of oil or butter. Major agricultural imports into Sudan include wheat and sugar, and their major exports are cotton, sesame, livestock and peanuts, and they are the world's largest producer of gum arabic, which is highly valuable and used in hundreds of consumer products. South Sudan imports sugar, cereal flowers, wheat and rice, and although it has fertile soils and abundant water, it does not have the proper infrastructure to create a stable export economy. The South Sudanese government is hoping to increase production of commodities like cotton, wheat and rice to export ready levels. This graph shows FAO data for the apparent consumption of staple foods except for teff in the former Sudan from 1993 to 2011. We can see that the supply of wheat, sorghum and yams in the former Sudan were at their highest in 2011, with millet peaking in 2007 but remaining stable since. This may mirror increasing political stability during this time. Australia is a nation built on wheat, and it's interesting to note that our apparent wheat consumption has always been higher than the former Sudan, even though we have less than half the population. This points to the overabundance of food we enjoy as a first world country. While there is no consumption data for sorghum, millet or yams during this time in Australia, we have been producing and exporting millet and sorghum for decades. Approximately half of these cereal crops are exported, with the remaining balance used more for animal feed than for human consumption. Most of the nearly 20,000 Sudanese-born people in Australia arrived between 1997 and 2007, and 98% migrated under the Australian Government Refugee and Special Humanitarian Programs. Sudanese immigrants arriving in Australia were largely escaping devastating wars, droughts and famines. This graph from the ABS shows that migration to Australia from the former Sudan peaked in 2005. Omar El Tagani's Sudanese Kitchen website and cookbook and Nola Mogga's Taste of South Sudan blog and YouTube channel are two prominent means of exposure to Sudanese food. Australia's international food culture, although varied and enjoyed by a nation of enthusiastic foodies, was largely established by earlier waves of migration, for example Italian, Chinese and Vietnamese. But African food, and Sudanese food in particular, remains more of a novel curiosity for most Australians than a staple element in the diet.
SBS Food is usually a good barometer of the presence of ethnic cuisines in Australia, but even it is lacking in inspiration for Sudanese food. And while Maeve O'Mara did investigate Africa in the popular Food Safari TV series, Sudanese food wasn't covered. There are more and more African restaurants popping up all over Australia, but only one, Khartoum Restaurant in Melbourne, appears to advertise Sudanese food specifically. Other popular African restaurants include The Horn and Niala in Melbourne and Lat Dior in Sydney. African grocers are beginning to appear, although their market appears to be mainly resettled Africans rather than curious Australians. 